the series entitled I'm Not a Monster will give a full account of Begum's story and insists her story will not go unchallenged. However, critics say the broadcaster is wasting license payers' money on giving a platform to someone who admits they joined a terrorist group. To give us his thoughts on this is social policy analyst Dr. Rakib Isan. Rakib, thank you for joining us today. Uh, should we be worried that the BBC has decided to give a platform to a, a known terrorist? I think we should be a little bit concerned, Calvin. Uh, I authored a piece for The Telegraph earlier in the week. Uh, in that piece, I said that the BBC risks becoming part of a wider cultural infrastructure, which is more interested in framing Shamima Begum as a victim, as opposed to a willing and committed ISIS volunteer. And, and I do feel that there's a, there's a broader discussion to be had in terms of the kinds of voices that we platform. Now, of course, I'm not saying that Shamima Begum shouldn't be platformed at all. Quite frankly, we've had multiple mainstream media outlets giving her airtime over the years. But I would like to see more voices belonging to groups which have been persecuted by ISIS being given the space to tell their story and for them to reveal the untold misery and suffering that they may have directly experienced or their loved ones have experienced at the hands of Islamist extremism. What did you make of the actual podcast itself? I mean, I gave it a listen. I, I found it unnervingly sympathetic to Shemaima. Um, it, I could almost class the podcast itself as terrorist sympathising. It was quite uh, one-sided in many aspects. You know, they talked about... Uh, different ways of telling a story and what she groomed, and then they found out that actually she wasn't groomed. She set up a lot of this stuff herself. What, what was your take? Well, I think that there's been a great deal of uh, stripping Shamima Begum of personal agency, and I, I don't agree with that at all, and I don't think that's the kind of road that we should be going down. I think in terms of the material in the podcast itself, uh, unfortunately, uh, she comes across as rather inauthentic, and that's largely because uh, in, in many of her interviews, uh, sh she strikes contradictory positions. I, th I think more generally, uh, we have this uh, growing progressive liberal bias in many of our public institutions, which see Muslims as an oppressed group. Uh, and that leaves uh, individuals within those in institutions vulnerable to please um, of, for, please for sympathy uh, from those who are associated with Islamist terror groups. And I think that that's a crying shame when really I'd like to hear the voices of those who have actually suffered at the hands of Islamist extremism. Yeah. Well, there's a difference between forgiveness and justice in Christianity as well. I think she should face justice and mm. receive a just punishment. Do you agree? And, and what would a just punishment be in this situation? Well, I think that we, there's been many debates about the citizenship stripping, uh, the revocation of Shamima Begum's British citizenship. And I think that that, that, that came across as more of a short-term fix. Uh, what I've suggested uh, in the past is that we need to have a modernisation of our treason laws, Calvin, uh, mm -hmm. which uh, these, uh, this modernisation reflects the, uh, the, the ideological composition of the terror threat that we face as a country. And, and I do think there should be very severe penalties indeed uh, for those uh, who are found guilty of joining and being a member of a prescribed terrorist organisation. I think that would be a, a more sustainable longer term strategy. And, and I, I didn't necessarily agree with the government's efforts when Sajid Javid was Home Secretary in terms of trying to push Samima Begum onto Bangladesh, who, who is an important member of the Commonwealth. So what you don't want to do when it comes to um, our sort of counter-terrorism policy, but also our citizenship regime, is alienate fellow members of the Commonwealth in the post-Brexit world. With you, as always.